In the world of life extension, Dr. Aubrey de Grey is a contrarian. He believes that our current understanding and the capabilities that biology gives us means it's actually easier to let damage occur inside of the body than it is to prevent damage from happening in the first place. And this is music to the ears of the millions of people that suffer from age-related pain. In fact, Dr. de Grey often points out that the number one cause of pain in the world is simply aging. And honestly, his messages are always great rallying cries for anybody who's gonna be older next year than they were the year before, which is all of us. Because if he's right, our younger years are actually ahead of us. So today we're gonna deep dive into the revolutionary and also sometimes controversial Dr. Aubrey de Grey. Let's unravel the myths, look at the science, and think about the vision that he has for our future. First, shout out to Jim for this comment, because without it, this video wouldn't be here today. Like, I still have less than 7,000 subscribers. I read all the comments. So if there's anything you guys wanna talk about, throw them in the comments and I'll look into it. Who is Dr. Aubrey de Grey and why should we care? So his full name is Dr. Aubrey Davis Nicole Jasper de Grey. I know, it's quite the mouthful, but he just goes by Dr. DeGray. He's not your typical scientist. His main background is in computer science. And then later in his career, he pivoted to biology, which I find really interesting because I love when computational methods are applied to biology. That's when we get really fantastic breakthroughs like with AlphaFold. So if this guy is, you know, computation guy at heart, he can do simulations, he can do mathematics, then maybe he is kind of leading a different direction into solving some of these problems. And actually when I looked him up on Google Scholar, I would find that some papers were just like mathematical proofs. He just truly seems to have an interest in that kind of thing. But technically, Dr. DeGray is a biomedical gerontologist, and gerontology is the study of the aging process. So his team works to understand the molecular and cellular mechanisms that cause us to get older. But what really sets him apart is he does seem to have a little bit of that super ambitious Elon Musk thing when he talks. He's always saying like, aging will be cured, this is possible, get on board now, don't miss it, don't be dumb. I think it just irks people because it's such a big vision through his narrative. His approach to combating aging revolves around a concept called strategies for engineered negligible senescence or SENS. Totally overly technical term in my opinion, but the one word that should stand out to you is the word senescence, which is just a reference to the natural deterioration of our bodies with age. So SENS is actually a collection of concepts and techniques to prolong healthy living. And SENS is the name of the research foundation, which is technically a nonprofit. So 20 years ago, one of the things Dr. DeGray did was he looked at all the different ways that we actually age and then he tried to group them and he ended up with these seven groups and that's still the way the research is focused today. So the first one is called cell loss or atrophy. This is just the concept that cells in our body, you know, as they duplicate, they get weaker and weaker over time and sometimes they just stop and break all together. They're missing and that messes with our organs and our tissues. And a solution for this is stem cells. How do you actually get these pluripotent cells that can become anything into the right parts of the body, replacing those that have been damaged? Next is the idea of cancerous cells. So as we get older, our cells are constantly duplicating and at some point the risk becomes high enough that one of the cells basically goes rogue and you end up with cancer. And a solution for this is to actually find a way to make it so that there isn't the ability for the cell to divide over and over again in an uncontrollable way, which is like why tumors or cancer cells that may become in mass because there's no coordination to the cell to stop duplicating. And then he thinks there's potential to control this through something called telomere length, which is actually a little piece of DNA that's found at the end of a chromosome. The metaphor is they're like the little plastic tips on the end of a shoelace that stop it from fraying. And when they become too thin, the DNA kind of frays and then it becomes much less robust over time. Each time a cell divides, that becomes less and less and less. So part of aging is getting less protection from that shoelace fraying. Number three is mitochondrial mutations. So remember the mitochondria, the energy, the powerhouse of the cell, as everyone likes to say on TikTok, has its own genetic code. It was actually probably its own cell a long time in the past and then kind of got eaten up by cells and now it lives inside of eukaryotes. But that mitochondrial DNA has very important instructions also and that can get messed up the same way the regular DNA in the nucleus can. And his solution for this doesn't make total sense to me, but I'm just gonna tell you because I guess it's possible. It's to actually move the mitochondrial genes out of the mitochondria and put them inside of the cell nucleus, inside of the place where all the other DNA is because that's much better protected. Which is crazy, but I guess in theory, as long as the DNA is inside of the cell and it's being transcribed into the proteins, I suppose, it doesn't need to be in the mitochondria. If it doesn't have its own cell wall, I guess you don't need to do that, but it's pretty fascinating. Number four is to address the death resistant cells. And this is where the word senescence comes from in SENS. Even though too many cells dying is a problem, also cells that don't die when they're supposed to is a big problem. You need just the right balance. And senescence is when they're not dying and they need to be cleaned up and get out of there. And the solution to this is all sorts of different things, but there's a lot of therapies that are trying to figure out how to target certain cell types 
and then make sure that they get the signal to self-destruct. Number five is tissue stiffening. And I feel like you can almost see this, you know, like as you get older, how your skin just isn't as elastic and tight. Flexibility is gone because too much stuff is kind of like jammed in there and stuck in there and it makes it so it isn't just like a loose piece of paper. So they're experimenting with different drugs and molecules that might go in there and selectively remove the stuff that needs to be removed to give it the flexibility again. Number six is called extracellular matrix degradation. Similar to the tissue issue, it's where junk is just accumulating between the cells where it shouldn't be. Some people theorize that Alzheimer's might be a protein that just keeps getting built up and stuck up there. So something like that that would clean it out. Yeah, and surprisingly, there's actually a connection to this in sleep too, because it seems like new science is showing that the glial lymphatic system while we're asleep goes in there and pulls out a lot out of this stuff. Sleep is like a dishwasher for your brain, gets all the junk off, you know? And number seven is similar, but it's intracellular junk. So these are the harmful byproducts that were accidentally made inside of the cell and can't get past the membrane and get flushed out of your system. And out of the seven, this is probably the hardest one to make progress on because we hardly even understand how all of the complexity inside of a cell is actually functioning moment to moment. And to go in there and actually point out what the good parts are and what the bad parts are and have some kind of mechanism, grab the bad parts and get them out. It's just very difficult. And when you look him up on Google Scholar, there is all sorts of papers he's been a part of. So I don't feel like I captured a great cross section of everything he's done, but here's a few things that I found. He authored a lot of stuff on cryonics, which is like when you wanna freeze your body so you can maybe come back to life in some future year, showing how there's better ways to maintain the brain after somebody dies so information doesn't fall apart, and then how some of the computational methods that he developed can help tell us how much it has been degraded. There was this paper called The Proposed Refinement of the Mitochondrial Free Radical Theory of Aging, which proposes an interesting dynamic about how mitochondria that is kind of its own cell inside of a cell. When it dies, it doesn't always get properly broken down and that's what leads to a lot of aging. And probably one of his most well-known pieces was this, the mitochondrial free radical theory of aging. Now, thanks to the large language model called Claude from Anthropic, I was able to summarize all 215 of these pages because I definitely don't have time to read all of that. And the simple explanation that it came up with is that cells have these protective barriers that are mainly made of fats and other compounds, which we know that's what a cell is. It's got that phospholipid bilayer around it. And some fats can change the flexibility of these barriers and there is an optimal flexibility that you want. But when you get the wrong fats, one of the reasons why it's important to try not to eat too much fried food is that those twisted up weird fats get stuck in there and it kind of damages its ability to kind of find its right balance. But even if you do have good fats making up all these cells, the real long-term battle is with free radicals. Free radicals just seem like these crazy ping pong balls that are like bouncing around inside of your body and they just break apart these fat cells and they're always causing damage the less you have, the stronger your cells can be maintained. And the body's used to having some level of this damage. It's got a mechanism that can actually like move fats around your body and try to maintain all of the cells. But over time, it sometimes can't keep up with the free radicals if we live in really bad environments where we're just bombarding it all the time. And also as you just get older, it gets worse and worse at repairing all of this stuff. And this paper breaks down a lot of the specific mechanisms that this happens by, including one where when you have these really damaged cells, they unfortunately do affect the healthy ones because the body goes and grabs some of the fat from the healthy ones, puts it in the unhealthy ones, and then basically all cells are now just a little bit weaker, or they end up distributed in these weird clumps that are less than ideal. But for all this fascinating research, he is somebody who's got a lot of controversy around him. Let me break down some of the main problems a lot of people would say they have with him. One is his scientific validity. There are many scientists out there that will question the underlying science of the SENS programs, and they just basically argue that he's overly optimistic and speculative and just a little too high level for it to be the in-depth science that he says it is. And its critics say that these overly optimistic timeline sort of mislead the public. But of course, they also help get funding. So that's, you know, that's one of the reasons why Elon time kind of exists is because it's also good for getting people to invest in your company. Although SENS is a nonprofit, it still requires funder donations. And that leads me to the critics who say that he has funding priority issues. As a nonprofit, he doesn't always have to align the work that they're doing with profits, which in one sense, from his point of view, is awesome because then he can actually go out there and do the real work that's not corrupted by capitalism. But some will also say that that allows him to just work on what's cool and kind of prop himself up without actually doing the most meaningful thing for the industry. Some people say that he doesn't focus enough on the long-term ethical concerns about a world where we've solved aging and what that actually means for people. Some people just hate on his beard. Sorry to say that, but he just has this like super crazy Santa Claus beard and this awesome British accent. And 
Nothing wrong with that, I guess, but there is something about him. He does kind of feel like he understands media and marketing and he's like an iconic look and sound. Just leading some people to be he's more of a marketer than he is a scientist, which is, uh, who cares? But I'm just saying like that beard is actually part of what bothers people. He's also been in trouble multiple times for sexual allegations, placed on administrative leave for it before, including some inappropriate stuff to 17 year olds, which was actually confirmed, at least according to the Wikipedia page. So. You know, that's pretty kind of kind of something weird. Weighing in on all those controversies, the idea that life extension and probably even reversing age is possible in our lifetime is a concept that I take to heart. I think that there is some real possibility here. But when I see the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence and I think about how good it's getting at translating between the language of the body, DNA and RNA into English, and I see other artificial intelligence algorithms that are so good at finding needles in haystacks and giving us information that we just couldn't come to any other way. And then you see how many tens of billions of dollars have been put into this industry in the last few years. Jeff Bezos and Sam Altman are all looking at billion dollar investments. This is becoming much bigger than just this one guy, even though he's been kind of pushing this for a long time and in some ways he kind of feels like the face of it. It's okay to start dreaming about a world where we live much longer, healthier lives. So now research that subscribe button, help me get to 7,000 subscribers. Thanks.